If you are tired of being powerless every time a storm hits your neighborhood, then you need to listen to this. A few weeks ago, Hurricane uh, Ida, that became Tornado Ida in my town, really wreaked havoc in my community. The F2 tornado went through a four mile stretch of neighborhoods, destroying homes and roofs, flooding backyards and basements, stranding homeowners, and we were without power for four days just in our neighborhood. And after many, many years of having that happen, we invested in a generator. So I wanna to talk to you about the three ways that you can use a generator in your home so that you can start to think about how you wanna prepare for future storms. So make sure you subscribe because what I do here at Hip Chicks is bring you very practical and useful information as homeowners. Uh, right now, one of my most popular video series is on caulking your bathroom and opening that tube of caulk. So if you want to learn more about caulking, make sure you click for that PDF up there and uh, you'll subscribe to the PDF in my newsletter so you stay in touch. Now, this generator topic may be a little more complex, but you really need to consider a generator if you have power outages in your home. So let's talk about the three options for powering up your house when the power fails. The most popular way to use a generator is to buy a portable generator and run it outside in the driveway and hook an extension cord from the generator into the house where you can plug in a sump pump, your refrigerator, your hot water heater, you know, the essentials that you need to keep the home at a bare minimum of safety and function. And it's very affordable in that, you know, you might spend anywhere from maybe $400 to $800, depending on the size generator that you use. It's a little bit inconvenient because you end up having a sea of extension cords uh, running through the home. So that can be a trip hazard. And it can be a little bit inconvenient because you have to run these cords and move from one appliance to another to keep everything going. So you have to be prepared to invest that time and manage all of that while the power is out. But that is the um, basic entry level generator and uh, easiest way to get started. The second option I wanna tell you about is the one that I have at my home. And that is where we use a portable generator, just like in the first option. But this one is actually wired into my house using a 30 amp cord. And this is not something you can DIY. This is something that you would have an electrician come to your house. They install a special outlet on the outside of your house and the power from the generator is fed to your circuit breaker so that the generator can then power most of your home. In my case, I can run about 75 to 80% of my home. And the reason this is not a DIY project is that you need to have a special interlock attachment added to your circuit breaker and have this 30 amp line run through your house. So it is definitely worth hiring. In this case, we spent about $800 on a rather high power generator, so it would run most of the home. And then we also spent about $800 on the electrical work, making sure that our house was wired properly and that our circuit breaker panel was installed correctly. And the reason being, if you were to try to hook a generator up to your house to backfeed your uh, circuit breaker without the proper steps, you can actually send electrical current down the power lines and you can injure or kill one of the linesmen. So it's important that you are using the 30 amp system properly. Now both option one and option two are using uh, this portable generator, it needs to be brought outside, and you need gasoline for it. So it's important to make sure that you have gas on hand. Even if you don't mow your own lawn anymore and you have a service, it's important to have at least one or two gallons of gas on hand in case the power fails. The third option is not portable and it does not require gasoline. It is when you have a whole house generator and that is a permanent unit that is planted outside the home. It is tied into natural gas or to propane. It is super convenient because it will automatically turn on when the power outage is detected. So it's a very convenient system, but it is also very expensive. Uh, typically anywhere from about eight to $10,000 for say, you know, a, a 2,500 to 3,000 square foot home. So you have to decide which of these options is right for you. 
If you have a family member that maybe is dependent on electricity for medical care or medical devices, then maybe the whole house system is the right option. But the portable options are ideal for people that don't want to make that large investment and you can still power the essentials. So it's important that you figure out what is the right system for your family's needs based on what goes on in your home and how often you tend to lose power. So I hope that you subscribe and hit that notification bell. My next video is gonna be all about generator safety. During this last storm, I saw a whole lot of people in my community doing some really dangerous and careless things with their generators. So we will review how to use one safely so that you can maximize the power and the safety at the same time.